On average, in the United States, the number of active missing person cases ranges from 80,000 to 90,000 at any given time. Of that number, about 50,000 are adults, and 52% of active investigations concern missing males. Tonight's case file involves one adult male of the many thousands who still haven't been found, and his abductor may be responsible for many more. Those who have fallen victim to the abductor are currently without any known identity or background, except for our one and only lead. Colin Henson, age 21 at the time of disappearance, reported missing in January 2015 from the area of Alexander, Arkansas. Colin Henson's presence on social media ended as quickly as it had begun. He had only been on the grid as he stated in his first tweet for a matter of days before activity ceased. Though in most missing person cases, social media may only provide investigators light clues on the events surrounding a person's disappearance, the activity recorded by Henson on the popular short-form video site Vine gave a direct indication of what had occurred. Vine uploads began on January 15th, just a day after Henson joined Twitter. He displayed a sense of humor about the situation, posting a second tweet making fun of his own sudden caving in to peer pressure. Hey, check out my Vine. Hashtag, five words to ruin a date. His first three vines also appear to be in the vein of following trends, as he recorded himself in funny and relatable everyday life situations similar to the Viner stars who had risen to popularity staging such videos. The first upload to break this pattern takes a new approach to making content Colin appears to believe people want to see. Time to go on a stroll around the neighborhood. It's an abandoned mental facility about a mile away from my house. An abandoned mental facility. Oh, that door's open. I think. Should I go in? Should I, go in? Should I not go in? The building Henson describes as an abandoned mental facility is known as the Alexander Human Development Center, located in Alexander, Arkansas, and Henson's description of the building is on the mark. The Alexander Human Development Center began its life in the year 1930 as a sanatorium, a specialty hospital for the treatment of tuberculosis. During the 1960s, as tuberculosis treatments became more effective and widespread in hospitals, the sanatorium was converted into a live-in treatment center for citizens with mental disabilities and disorders, as well as developmental issues and rehabilitation needs. It operated until 2011, when the governor of Arkansas demanded it be shut down after allegations of patient abuse, staff misconduct, and attempts by the facility to seek additional funding after failing several key safety standards for the building. It now sits abandoned, and vandalism has taken its toll on the building since closure. As far as the horror stereotype of abandoned mental facilities go, this building has a very genuine history, and the information page for the location on a site for abandoned buildings in Arkansas has a very interesting comment. I used to work here in the kitchen from 2003 to 2010, and it was very spooky in the kitchen. While doing dishes you could hear someone calling your name. You'd look at your other co-workers and ask them if they were hollering your name, and they would say no. Over by the bakery part, you'd see a little black lady with a long dress or coat on, and a child was following her, holding onto her dress. The place we kept our cold stuff used to be the morgue. What were conditions like in this place Colin Henson was entering for the entertainment of a then non-existent Vine audience? In this article about the governor's intention to close the development center in 2010, it was cited that the building was home to 109 adult males, many of whom had severe physical and mental health issues. A commenter who worked inside the center wrote in the comment section of the article describing what they witnessed. The first thing you notice when you walk in is the overwhelming smell of pee. I have seen and reported abuse and neglect. I have seen mechanical restraints being put to use such as straitjackets and papoose boards. I have seen how they live, the lack of privacy, and how wrong it is. I was told continuously while I worked there to not answer any of the questions the investigators from the Department of Justice were asking. Of course, I did, but they wanted to hide what they are doing. They rarely get out into the community. They are clustered and kept there on the grounds and only interact with their staff and other individuals with disabilities. They have little to no privacy, as the human development centers are famous for having dormitory-style rooms, with upwards to 15 individuals per room. They have no rights, nothing that is theirs, no privacy, and not to mention the assembly line type showering they do, and yes, they do it. They are at more risk for being abused because they are not educated as to what abuse and neglect is. Their individual program plans are all very generic and do not include goals such as these. Most of them are on entirely too many medications that were prescribed by a psychiatrist that sees them, on average, about 45 minutes per year. 
please remember that this is happening because 1. The Department of Justice came back and investigated again and found them out of compliance again. They were there in 2003. And 2. They were out of compliance with their own regulations. The initial lawsuit is appalling. If any of you read it, I'm sure you'd change your tune. The abandoned mental facility Colin Henson entered on January 18, 2015 was home to 109 adult males, all of them living under the conditions outlined by this former employee. Closure of the facility meant these patients had to be dispersed throughout the community, taken out of the building they had known to be their only true place of living for years and given the opportunity to move around in the outside world. Aside from the haunting recent history of the now-closed Alexander Human Development Center, the very long and detailed time it spent as a tuberculosis sanatorium with its own morgue also seems to have left a supernatural touch, which one kitchen cook who worked there for seven years felt all too strongly. Colin explores the facility, checking out a few rooms and hallways littered with the remains of furniture, shelving, and pieces of the building that are rotting away. There's nothing of note to be found until he comes across an object that shouldn't be discovered in a place like this. A cow mask. He's had enough exploring and is leaving now, but the following Vine uploads reveal he encountered some trouble. Though the shape in the corner could be anyone, it does look similar to Colin and the movements we witness are strange. We receive a vine that seems to come after midnight of someone proceeding through the building and quickly come to realize that it's not Colin. Someone has his phone now and lets his viewers know he needs his medicine. The majority of viewers who witnessed the abduction of Colin Henson did not come to watch these events by following his Vine or Twitter account. Rather, it was the hand holding the phone who let the audience hear. On YouTube, a channel named Ben's Playhouse had uploaded a video titled NewFriend.mov in which the cameraman follows a person walking inside what appears to be an abandoned building. They attack from behind, revealing the victim to be a male with a red sweatshirt. Precisely what Colin Henson had been wearing on his way to the Alexander Human Development Center. A link to Colin's Vine account was placed in the video description, making it clear who the new friend was. Early viewers who examined the dates on the Vine uploads and the new friend video found there was a discrepancy. Colin's trip to the Human Development Center began on January 17th while the sun was still out. The next recording, his arrival at the building was just after this with the sun still clearly setting, but the upload date listed as January 18th. Building exploration clips that night were also on the 18th, but the video for New Friend in which Colin was abducted was uploaded to YouTube on the 17th. There is a delay between the events as they happened and the upload of recordings. Publication of New Friend on the 17th with a link to the Vine account would have shown viewers that the latest video by Colin was the start of his journey here. All following videos recorded past that point were uploaded the next day, the 18th, even if they had been recorded on the 17th. Colin's abductor had attacked, taken the phone, and begun uploading what he recorded that evening after midnight, so viewers experienced the delay. The user behind Ben's Playhouse, most likely Ben mentioned in the title, posted videos that had been recorded and saved to the phone but not uploaded, posing as Colin himself until he needed to begin recording his own material. There's no telling how long the delay was, but it means Colin had been kidnapped well before viewers were shown his condition on Vine. These exploration videos aren't from Colin. It's Ben, mimicking his style. But who is Ben, and what does he want? The channel's uploads prior to New Friend are a mix of disjointed footage showing people in great distress. The first video, Bathtub, seems to show a person being drowned, while Campfire appears to be a recording of someone bound, blinded, and placed dangerously close to a fire. Cowboy gives us the origin of the cow mask, as Ben shows a captive who wears it locked in a room, crawling on all fours. Ben's Playhouse, formerly known as the Alexander Human Development Center, appears to be a new kind of madhouse where Ben, as they write in the channel's About tab, traps people and makes them his friend. There's also an associated Twitter account listed, which we will be visiting in due time. Colin's fate after being fed pills is revealed in the video Time Out, which has a description reading, He will feel better soon. Colin is shown behind a fence, wearing a mask and very clearly closed off from any kind of escape, though he does try to attack Ben. The Vine account gives us more insight as Colin is shown still trapped a day later. 
He then seems to be under the effect of some kind of drug or reaching out for something that isn't quite there. Ben gives us more footage of his captive on January 20th with the video Hide and Seek. The description reads, We're having so much fun. Another of Ben's friends in a black bodysuit and white mask crawl around on all fours before we're shown Colin, now seen without a shirt and the mask still stuck to his face, running from a pursuing cameraman inside the playhouse. The video ends with a clear indication that Colin has been caught by the man in the white mask. The rest of the events play out on Vine, with Ben summoning the white masked man again and again to hunt down Colin in the playhouse. By January 21st, Colin appears to be broken. There are no updates for 9 months. The Vine stops uploading, and the next video on the channel for Ben's Playhouse comes October 27, 2015. The description reads, See you all soon, and Ben is on a plane. A shot is lined up displaying what he's wearing. Colin's red sweatshirt. There's no telling where he's going, or where he's coming from, but we do hear from him again very shortly on October 31st of last year. Halloween. This video, Lady in Red, is the longest on the channel, a recording of Ben stalking a woman through a supermarket. He begins in the parking lot, following a woman with pinkish red clothing, but then finds a new target inside the store. After cashing out, she heads to her van and Ben takes just the right opportunity to slip inside and hide under objects in the back. Eight days later, a new video is uploaded titled Sandman. Ben walks through a house and into a bathroom where a woman is trapped in the shower, her face covered in clown makeup. Colin is no longer needed. The lady in red is Ben's new best friend. In the video description, he states, We are feeling happy. Call or SMS 501-432-9586 and leave a message or SMS. You won't be sorry. What happens if you call the number? This is what you'll hear. Hey, uh, you've reached Colin Henson. Sorry, I missed your call. Uh, if you want to leave me a voicemail, I'll try to get back to you. Information on Ben's trail picks up from here on his Twitter account. The upload involving Colin's number certainly got a response. A day later, Ben tweets out, So many new friends. His profile picture and entire Twitter theme is pure red, just like Colin's sweatshirt and the lady in red's clothing prior to being kidnapped. Back when the account was being used, Ben seems to have given his followers a puzzle to solve that's no longer available for viewing. On November 11th, he wrote, No one can solve my puzzle. Here's a hint. One of my best friend's birthdays is this month. Hope you all remembered. The next day, he posts an image of a lady in red, his new playmate. Some emotional tweets follow as Ben keeps us from gaining any more useful information, but he later gives out a clue to the puzzle he wants an answer to and reminds everyone it still needs to be solved. The answer is Colin's birthday, found on his Twitter account, and the number 30 is handed over just in time. I am thankful for my friends, Ben tweets. It's done. I didn't want to do it, but I wanted to show all my new friends how much I appreciate you. What exactly is it that Ben did? He gave back Colin, it seems, as a new tweet on Colin's birthday from his account reads, How did I get here? Another tweet comes through on December 1st replying to someone who asked about what happened to him, but nothing more came from the account after. As Colin experienced a hell we can't even begin to imagine, and Ben is still in possession of his phone and connected social media accounts, it may be safe to assume that Ben is playing the audience once again, making them think he gave back Colin when there's no chance that he's ever coming back. Nothing more has come from any of the online accounts associated with these events. Ben has not posted on Twitter or uploaded a new video. No more vines have appeared from Colin, and there have been no tweets or confirmation of his well-being. Ordinarily, this is where a case file would go cold, but a bit of investigation did bring us some more info. After the update video showing his plane ride, it would seem like anyone's guess where Ben is, but we can pinpoint the general area he was in while abducting the lady in red by using portions of that video. The supermarket that Ben entered to catch his next victim is a Kroger marketplace. Kroger, like many supermarket chains, can only be found in certain areas of the United States, which does narrow down the territory, but still gives us a lot of states to look at. Thankfully, Ben gave himself away by recording another business on his way to the Kroger, Hug and Hall Mobile Storage. Searching for Hug and Hall gives us their website with plenty of logos to match what's on camera. The site reveals they mainly operate in the state of Arkansas. So, cross-referencing the locations of Kroger Marketplaces with the service area of Huggin Hall, the state of Arkansas, we've got a few options to check out for a match to the video. 
The key identifiers of the Kroger store from which the lady in red was abducted can be found on two sides. From the front, we have a Kroger Marketplace sign above the main entrance, a blue food and pharmacy sign to the left, and a large hill behind the store with a very visible water tower. On the left, we have Major Woodland, a red sign on the far side of the building, and a sort of development behind it and to the left, mostly made of red brick with a tan upper segment topped off by grey roofing. Using the Street View and Earth Layer options on Google Map, I was able to pinpoint the exact Kroger location after exploring a few points of interest. Ben abducted the Lady in Red from the store on 14,000 Cantrell Road in Little Rock, Arkansas. Google Street View provided two perspectives to line up the building with clues from the video. On the left side, we have the red electric sign on the far corner of the building, and we can see the development standing behind it on the left, right before the major area of Woodland. Those buildings after the Kroger are an exact match to the site in the video. On the right side, our perspective gives us the front of the building with the Kroger Marketplace sign, a shot of the hill, and beyond it, the water tower. If you were standing in the parking lot itself looking at the front, the water tower would line up directly in front of you as if it were on the hill. Using the 3D tilting option available as part of Google's EarthView satellite layer, we get complete confirmation. The front of the Kroger, the building on the left, the hill, and the water tower in exactly the positions we needed. We can even see where Ben entered the parking lot below. We don't know where he went when he took that plane, but he definitely came back to Arkansas for his next victim, and he found her at the Little Rock Kroger Marketplace. That's as far as we can go in extracting new information for this case. Judging what occurred in Alexander Human Development Center, it's a relatively safe bet to say that Ben was probably one of the 109 males living there when it closed. It would make much more sense for one of the prior patients to return to a place they used to call home for their playhouse. How long he's been doing this, and what he's been up to since the last upload are mysteries we don't have answers to. But he's still hunting in Arkansas, and we have the evidence to prove it. And it's at this point that I've got to remind everyone that if you do live in Arkansas, there is no Ben to be afraid of and no Colin Henson who went missing. I know for most of you, that does go without saying, but I've had a bit of fun in the way I've relayed this story and I know it. Ben's Playhouse is just another well-crafted fictional horror experience online for the mind of a creative person. A person who really knew how to make something new and inventive using a unique approach. At first glance, Ben's Playhouse looks like yet another channel with nonsensical, disjointed, creepy uploads looking to get into some kind of top 10 list video, but it's a lot better than that by far. I've only ever seen Vine used for this kind of thing once, and that was in Tribe 12 as supplementary material, not for a main branch of storytelling. The way Vine videos were utilized here is very inventive and inspiring. I'm genuinely surprised I haven't seen more of this actually. The potential for things you can do with it is pretty deep. And in terms of the location of Ben's Playhouse, when you keep the character of Ben in mind as you learn about Alexander Human Development Center, you just find that the writing behind this is brilliant. This is some real alternate reality storytelling, writing the line between what's real and what's fiction very hard, and the effect is awesome when you make the connection and do some digging. The abandoned mental hospital Colin explored actually is an abandoned mental hospital, and his kidnapper may very well have been a former patient. Not only because it's plausible by the writing, but because we know for a fact now that if this kind of thing actually did happen, the logic holds up. It makes sense. There's a lot to like about Ben's Playhouse, and I'm just so glad it exists. This is a firm example of what kind of cool things you can do in our medium of storytelling in more than one way. Well done to whoever played Colin Henson and whoever helped him create Ben's Playhouse. The placement of Ben's Playhouse as one of my case files is due to its sudden halt and major lack of answers. You can do a lot of work filling in some of the gaps yourself, but overall, there is no closure. It seems as if this story was just getting started in earnest when it froze. Progress can't be made, and there's not much else to make of this, but what we've been given is very valuable. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. I hope you've enjoyed this tale of a real abandoned mental hospital and some not so real but still very fun storytelling that went on there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and hit the like button if you've had a good time. Subscribe for more coverage of dark, psychological, and mysterious media. And follow me on Twitter to know as soon as I've got something new coming along. Major thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon who have made it possible to operate Nightmind full time and given me a lot of power to do some special things this October in the coming weeks. Stay around to catch the names of all of these awesome creatures of the night. That's it for tonight, everybody. 
Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and like a homesick mental patient hungry for some friendship and fun, I'll be catching you real soon. Sleep tight.